Walk one with the boobs, blood. I'm Clara Hermit, this is my YouTube channel. In two weeks time, I'm having a preventative double mastectomy because I carry the BRCA1 gene. A lot of people don't know what that is, they don't know what it means, so I thought it would be good to do a Q&A about it so that people could ask me questions, I could answer them, and hopefully shed a bit more light on what it is that I'm doing and why. How do women find out if this is something they should do? If you have a family history of breast cancer and somebody gets breast cancer they will test them for the gene, uh, the gene mutations that they know about which is BRCA1 and BRCA2 if that person with breast cancer has the hereditary gene mutation. They'll test you because obviously it's quite possible that you could also carry the gene. Can you pick the size of your replacements? Because obviously having my natural breast tissue removed and then I'm having implants, I can't pick the size, it doesn't work like that. Uh, my boobs will be smaller because uh, it's only going to be skin carrying the weight of the implant so they can't put implants in that are the same size as my boobs are now. They're going to be whatever size they're going to be, no one really knows until the operation is done and dusted and that's just the way it is. I'm waiting to have my BRCA results. Any tips on how to cope during the weeks leading up to results day? For me, when I had my test, my sister was um, pretty ill in hospital. It all got like washed up and washed away in that and I didn't really think about it and I really didn't think that I'd have the gene so I went to the hospital on my own and um, I got the results and I just, ugh, it blew my mind. Stay positive because either way, whatever the result is, if you don't have it, amazing, brilliant, and if you do have it, you're now in a position where you're empowered, you know you have it, and you know that there is something that you can do about it. Whichever way it goes, it can only be positive, and I think you have to hold that in your mind. Make sure that you've got friends and family around you. Try not to focus on it because ultimately you can't change what that result is gonna be. So you just have to deal with it when you get there and when you do, there's loads of amazing um, help at hand. Just try not to worry, keep yourself busy and don't let it consume you. How do you get yourself prepared mentally for such a big moment in your life? Ugh, wow, for me, I've taken time, a lot of time to really um, come to terms with it. I think as soon as I found out I had the gene, I knew that this was what I was gonna do. And then, when I made the appointment to have the operation and that date, that 15th of January date, set in my head, it's been a constant ugh, roller coaster um, of, of addressing things that maybe I thought that I was completely fine about, you know. And I guess it's kind of one of those times where I really miss my mum and I really miss my sister and the fact they're not here has become so very obvious during these times that, um, that that's caused a lot of... Uh, upset for me but on the flip side of that I know that this is a positive movement I'm in control I'm empowered when you have that mindset although other things come along and, and you worry about them and that mindset that positive mindset overrides everything that this is the right thing to do overrides everything because none of the other stuff matters I'm gonna do this whatever and that's what matters how do you think this double mastectomy will affect your self-esteem hmm. I hope that it won't affect my self-esteem. Sometimes I'm scared, and I'm not scared of the physicality of the operation, because that doesn't frighten me, you know. I know I'm having the operation, that's fine. I am scared of the other side. I am scared of looking in the mirror for the first time, and I am scared of, you know, taking my clothes off in front of somebody for the first time. Looking at my boobs when they don't look how they used to, and, and they've got scars, and, and just kind of, and being okay with that, but then, I think like that and then all of a sudden I'm like Clara just shut up because you're alive you get to have your life and obviously my mum and my sister don't have that choice so me being like oh I've got a few scars um, in comparison to them not being alive anymore really just makes me think it doesn't matter I me I'm not going to change just because my boobs have changed and I have a shot at life I'm alive I can be here and I'm doing this to prolong my life there's times where you have like moments of weakness and you think, oh my God, you know, what happens if I never find a boyfriend? What happens if nobody finds me attractive again? What happens if nobody ever loves me? And then I think, you know what? I, I love myself and I love myself that I, enough that I am doing this. Have you planned a special way of saying a final goodbye to them? Yeah, I have. I had a goodbye to boobs photo shoot, which I did a couple of weeks ago. I just did like a whole variety of pictures, just really like embrace my boobs so that I've got something to look back on and remember them. I'm also having a goodbye boobs party as well, the week before my operation, so exactly a week before. 
So it's for all my friends, my family, some of my mates from BBC Radio 1 Extra are going to be DJing. We're going to have boob tails instead of cocktails, boob cupcakes. We're going to have some pictures um, that were taken at the Goodbye to Boob shoot, just blown up. Insta boob, like kind of frames so that people can have their pictures taken with the boob and put it on their Instagram. Um, and just have some fun with it because it is serious and making that decision is not something that was, you know, easy to do. And I've made that decision and it is going to happen. I need to make the most of this situation and I need to remind myself and as many other people as is possible that this is really a positive thing. Did you have any other options? It works like this. If you have the gene mutation, BRCA1 and BRCA2 are slightly different but very similar. Um, if you have the gene mutation then what that means is you have around an 85% life chance of getting breast cancer. If you then have the preventative double mastectomy, it reduces your 85% by 90%. So it actually makes you at less of a risk than the majority of the population. The only other option is to just have yearly MRI scans to just keep an update on what's going on. And for me, that felt like if I just have MRI scans, then I'm waiting to go there for them to tell me that I've got cancer. For me, this was the only option that gives me the power, that doesn't give cancer the power, that gives me, you know, that I'm in control. For other people, they choose other things, and that's entirely up to them. But for me, it's more peace of mind. I want to know that it's done, it's dealt with, and I've got my life, and I can just carry on. Keep on pushing on. Are you proud of this step? I don't think proud is, it's not, well how can you be proud of it? It's not something I chose, it's not an achievement. I knew that I had to do this for my own peace of mind to reduce my risks of getting breast cancer. I thought, if I'm gonna do this, I want other people to feel the way I feel about it. I want other people to feel empowered, to feel positive, to feel strong, to know that this isn't the end of anything. It's, it doesn't change who you are. It doesn't. It doesn't change everything about you. It's just something else that you have to do in life. There's loads of people who aren't doing what I'm doing, but who might have kind of like body confidence issues, self-esteem issues, self-love issues, I guess. This journey for me has probably given me more of all of that than I've ever had before. I want other people to feel that they are amazing and that you can do whatever you want and there is nothing to stop you. Ultimately, you're in control of your life and I think that that is really, really important. Me and Barbie say, subscribe, subscribe.